Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Mike Manapkin runs the Democratic House law for 30-plus years of running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank, gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois, but you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan to have a taxpayer pay, no doubt. Not a matter of if anymore, but when you're moving out. Dan and Amy, the theme music means it's time for our weekly confab with Ted Dabrowski, president of wirepoints.com, all things Illinois policy related, and we'll get to momentarily. But uh, something else we were talking about uh, with Don Boudreau about the culture that in America that preceded COVID, some of the features. I think things should be a certain way. There ought to be a law. Another feature is the abdication of responsibility almost pathological, institutional as well as individual. Let me give you examples of what I mean. Lockport School District 205. Their superintendent's name is Bob McBride. Lockport, in its infinite wisdom, uh, recently moved to go mask optional. Yeah, Monday it was official. Mm -hmm. They have... uh, 21 out of 4,000 students are in quarantine for an active case or exposure. Yeah, which they're all healthy. I bet my left leg. 21 of 4,000, and they were managed to muster the initiative to go mask optional <laughs> on Monday. So here's um, Bob McBride addressing that. We needed to get seven days of health indicators to make sure that they were going in the right direction, that it would be nice. safe. All of those institutions above and around us have inadvertently created a situation where it's every district for itself. And that is so confusing for our parents. It puts us in a situation where the only thing we can do, and what I said to our community, is trust the plan that the seven board members I work with Uh, approved in August. I mean, suck it up. That's what it should be. Each district decides for themselves. Well, that, sorry, to, that's, sorry to inconvenience him with our freedoms or attempt to have them back. Well, that's number one. I mean, you're a unit of government. Uh, you and that school board are in a position uh, as fiduciaries and essentially executive slash legislative. So make decisions uh, based on the information you have on what you think is in the best interests of the school in conjunction with parents. And, and staff, but but something else too. The um, um, yeah, the the deference to authorities above and around us, right? We can't make a decision because there's mixed signals or there's confusion above us. Well, then provide clarity at the local level where you have authority. That you're paid to do, right? Man up. God, I saw that and I thought, get him a p hat, size small just doesn't want and by the way something else too all we can do is execute the plan that we cobbled together last fall is that all you can do we don't have the ability to think we don't have the ability to assess the situation on the ground in real time we have a plan that we put together and put on a shelf back in august of last year this is very much like these no tolerance policies at schools We don't have the ability to make independent determinations based on the facts of a particular case. We have a a policy in the handbook. And so this eliminates our need to think. In Wilmette yesterday, outside Village Hall, there was a protest against the mask mandate at the local uh, grade school district, District 39. This was uh, the protest as covered by WGN. A 7 a.m. protest outside Wilmette Village Hall. About 50 parents called for an off-ramp. We just think that it's time for the school district to to be flexible and to really go along 
with what's happening in most of the country. Many of them worried about the long-term effects of children wearing masks. I feel suffocated sometimes or anxious, uh, sometimes sad. Pointing to declines in COVID cases and easy access to vaccines, these parents urged School District 39 to make masks optional. So that's the protest. Now here's a counter protester who is also on site. Listen oh to this okay. Wilmette resident. I will. It is coming. And I don't think the time that they are spending now on Valentine's Day dealing with a protest is not needed. Let them do their jobs. They want an off ramp. They have communicated that they want an off ramp and they are working on it. What does that mean? They're working on it. How? And what does that mean dealing with a protest on Valentine's Day? How does the school board have to deal with the protest? The protest just happens. There's no responsibility of the school board to oh. deal with it. Working on it. They're working on it. It's that default trust in government. And you use these empty phrases like they're working on it. What is it to work on? What does that mean? What is the work product they're cobbling together another plan like they had in lockport back in august the abdication that woman the counter protester abdicating per abdicating uh, critical thinking in addition to individual sovereignty it, it, that's 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 the school board's decision nobody question them lockport superintendent well that should be the county or the state's decision and then we just follow orders Nobody wants to think and nobody wants to act. They want somebody else to do it for them and say, well, I was told to do this. Ted Dabrowski, president of WirePoints.com, joins us now. Ted, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning, Dan. Good morning, Amy. So uh, yeah, the, good there, the good news yeah, is, is I'm I'm sorry. Uh, up there in Wilmette, uh, the, the Tony North Shore where you live. Well, yeah, you know, um, I think, as I, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, when, when the Wilmette crowd starts to rise up, you know, I, I think it's the end of the cycle. Uh, usually, the Wilmette crowd is, is not willing to stand up and, 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 and fight back. But uh, it was it was wonderful to see parents. They were very well behaved. Again, I, I really loved the eloquence of the of the parents. They're just asking for choice. They they weren't being aggressive or nasty. Uh, you know, they they said, "Look, we've waited two years." They they expressed the the pains that uh, kids have gone through, and uh, well done. But also good to see a place like Wilmette speak up. And people are making progress. I mean, last night at the the school board meeting in District 99, Downers Grove, uh, they set up five or no, I'm sorry, 15 chairs total for parents. It's a school of 5,000. And so they, I mean, they don't care about the parents' voice, but they actually, now they reverse course and starting February 28th, they're going to go mask optional. But they still oh, the have to same, wait the, until then. The same day that uh, Pritzker is ending right. the indoor mask mandate. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could always take that away. But that's my point. They're, they're only, February 28th is only a date on their radar now because of what Pritzker said. Well, I think that's always the fascinating part, too, is that, um, you know, stay masked until you have to, but, you know, one, one day to the next, the, the, law, the rule can change, and now everything's fine. It's, it's you know, pretty arbitrary. But I, I think it kind of goes back to what you, you were talking with Don also and, um, and what you were just saying a minute ago about, about decision-making. And I think this is a big part of what's missing in the overall discussion, you know, the political discussion, is we've got to push decision-making back down to the local levels again. Um, you know, we keep we keep centralizing. We're federalizing everything where where, where they're trying to federalize everything in D.C. Uh, the states keep trying to centralize everything. This is where you get the executive orders. Uh, you get all these curriculums coming down from the top, um, and 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 our local board gets to act like, well, we can't make decisions anymore. And, and that's the real problem is that we've centralized so much that you know it makes it makes local decision making so weak. So we got to we got to reverse that. Of course, that would be our goal. Um, as, as an America, to get back to where, what we used to be in that sense, push the decision making as close as possible to the people. But uh, we're in the right. and, of that right now. Yeah, and then you need people that are willing to make decisions at the local level. That's the trick because it's just easier, as you've seen school boards do for the last uh, two years. We're relying on CDC guidance. Yeah, and and, and that's where it's gone on in not just COVID, but everything else, right? Curriculum, uh, all those things. And, and I think this is why, again, I think the school choice voice hopefully will continue to grow because it can't continue to work like this i mean they can't have it both ways right it can't be centralized there's no power and yet they want to run the schools because the boards are showing that they they don't have the power they don't have decision making then then why do we have them 
uh, polling out on on masking um, because the um, the goal here is to uh, frame those parents protesting in Wilmette and and elsewhere as uh, part of some fringe minority. You know the way that Trudeau does it with the Freedom Convoy. Polling by uh, CBS YouGov. Uh, should your state have mask mandates? 56% say yes. 44% say no. Uh, and it's basically a, a negative composite among the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. Among the vaccinated, 66 to 34, yes. Among the not vaccinated, 34 to 66, yes. So um, the fully vaccinated majority of the country, uh, they have a super, major, the, a super majority of them say yes, mask mandates. Uh, not vaccinated, a minority of the country, a supermajority of them say no mask mandates. And this is the divide that they've been pushing for some time, either comply or be marginalized because you're a minority that is, uh, you know, reigning on the parade of the majority. Well, I guess the question would be, you know, they, they, they did that poll now. I wonder what that poll would be. Uh, you know, when the big states, because the big states are the ones that still have the mask mandates, right? California, New York, Illinois, et cetera. You know, how does the polling change once once the governors say, OK, we can we, we're now we're now safe and we no longer have a mask mandate? Will it all flip again? And or will we still see 60 percent of people wearing masks around? Um, you know, I, and I, I, I'm very cautious. We should not critique people who wear masks, in my view, um, we should not critique them. The question will be, will they continue? Will 60 percent of the school, once once the mandates are lifted, will 60 percent of school children have masks on? I can bet you no. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to know how this poll plays out in, in such a such a messed up environment where the media and the data and all the, everything is so messed up that and the fear is so high that you 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 can't fault a lot of people for being scared right now because they, they listen to the media. They trust it. And, uh, you know, and, and they they don't know what else to think. And then, but some, of course, some, once the mandate's lifted, they'll be OK. There's something else about this polling, though, too, because this is what um, the uh, cowardly Republican Party uh, at the party leadership levels, not some of the gubernatorial candidates, but people like Durkin and McConkie. This is what they're doing. They're chasing polling like a problem gambler. They don't know what to do. They're losing. So they're just chasing. And um, that's not a way to make decisions. But here again, we have another instance of the abdication of decision making, the abdication of acceptance of responsibility, particularly when those responsibilities are attendant to your position. And so they look at this. How, how do we talk about it? What position should we take? They don't they don't see trends. Number one, they don't want to make arguments. They just want to repeat the position embedded in a polling question back to people. And that is a complete abdication of leadership. And it's why you don't have Republicans in any real position of leadership in Illinois, to my mind. Well, the, the thing is that this is a, a moment to be principled. Uh, you, know, you can use polls, and you know, everybody uses polls in, in, in the political world. Uh, but what we forget is that ignoring the polls, there's principles. The question is, do you stand behind them? And then do you use, do you use your principle, your persuasion, your logic and reasoning to bring people around where the polling might be the wrong way, quote, compared to principles, but with, with enough you know, bully pulpit and, and holding your ground and explaining why you support something and why you oppose something, you bring people around. And that's precisely how how minds change in polls. But uh, if, if you don't actually stand up and, and defend your principle and say why this is wrong or this is right, uh, well, then it's no wonder the, that the polls stay like they do. I, I think, uh, of I course. Think I mean, yeah, have, I have, go ahead. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but it's like, it's like there, there's never been a uh, a position that started out as a minority position that not only became a majority position, but the law. Of course, that happens all the time. But you have to make a case. You have to make a case. And that goes for Republican legislators. It goes for school superintendents or school board members. It goes for just parents and everyday people. Uh, Nobody will make a case on what they actually believe and why they believe it to try to persuade. It's just, oh, well, majority's there. I guess we better fold in. And the other thing, too, about people running around suggesting, oh, the majority is here. You know, majorities and minorities are fleeting things when it comes to public policy issues. And, oh, by the way, uh, if you ever find yourself now in a majority, in a minority, maybe you'll be a little bit more concerned about minority rights, which is a feature of free societies and that are that are, are are you know governed by representative bodies. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're seeing majority positions. You know, they they, they fall apart quite often, right? Uh, 
you know, we've had a lot of the, back to the data and science quote that we've talked about here, there's so much data and science that shows that the majority of what's being said is, is not right. Uh, however, it's, you know, it's, it's published by the establishment, by the media, by, by big government, and, and therefore that frames the, the, the majority position, but that doesn't make it true. And, uh, you know, it's, it's on, on those who, who, who like the actual data and the actual science to, to make their case stand up and, and defend it. And, and over time you win people, but uh, you do it by being principled, not by, by uh, you know, just rolling over or compromising all the time. Have you been amazed that, you know, there are three supposedly, supposedly equal branches of government and that, you know, principals and athletic directors, they don't like the ruling, so they didn't follow the judge's orders, and now they're being held in contempt of court. That includes the Mount Greenwood principal, Reedy, and the athletic director from District 128 who, and from Vernon Hills who, you know, when his player came back in for practice, like, no, you have to wear a mask. That only pertains to you at school. But that's incorporated in it. So they have to show up for a court hearing February 25th, and so does Pedro Martinez, the CEO of CPS, or, you know, for violating the judge's orders. What do you think they're going to do, the judge? Yeah, you know, this whole separation of powers is, is, is the key. Probably, probably one of the key points of this whole thing is that separation of powers is gone. And, and the fact that, you know, again, I would love to hear Democrats rally against Pritzker and say, look, 700 days is enough. We want to take back the power. I'd love to hear Republicans say the same thing, and some of them do. Um, I don't think any Democrats do. But nobody is fighting to take back the power from Pritzker. And, and that's what's absolutely amazing. After all this time, um, you can't find the principle. And that's, that's why I think there's a lot of frustration, too, because things don't work like they're supposed to. And uh, where does this frustration, frustration take us? I don't know. Save our democracy and checks and balances. Yeah, it's quite a rallying cry of the left these days. Ted Dabrowski, president at wirepoints.com, all things Illinois policy related. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. You're listening to Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. This is attorney Stephen Leahy. This isn't the first crisis we faced together. Back in 08, business professionals in trouble sought help from bankruptcy attorneys, loan modification attorneys, foreclosure to 